We're hey, on. everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. This is Romy's Rock Stars Sizzle. And tonight we get to have the fabulous Amanda Whitman um, present to us. And she is to give us some tips and some really good information about staying healthy during our holidays. Because we want to stay healthy during the holidays so that we are able to share with other people. But it's really good to take care of yourself. So Amanda, take it away. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, always a pleasure. I always feel so honored whenever Kenzie asks. Um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I still feel like I'm fumbling around in the dark trying to figure out, um, you know, what we're doing here. This is, you know, a career that we make ourselves, but also it's, you know, it, it, it's fun, but it can get a little bit tricky and you kind of have that question of, am I doing this right? So thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. Um, so you guys know that if I'm going to talk about anything, I'm going to talk about the foundational wellness pyramid first and foremost, because I feel like that creates this, um, oh, this framework for us to um, model our decisions after, right? So we don't have to wonder about, is this a good wellness decision or a bad wellness decision? We just know that if it fits into this framework, we know like how much weight to put on it. Um, and it gives me a nice framework by which to make decisions. So um, if you guys are not familiar with the, the wellness lifestyle pyramid, you're gonna find it in basically any doTERRA literature that you can come across. It's this little, for, you know, this little picture here, and it gives you a really good job jumping off point for how to make some smart choices for wellness in your body. So the number one foundation, we're talking like base of the pyramid. If you don't have this, you can't stack anything else on top of it is nutrition. Um, that is going to be your foundation. So I don't decide when I get a cold. Now's a really good time to start feeding my body um, really great foods. Um, now's a really great time to start feeding my body the vitamins and minerals that it needs. Um, it's a little bit too late to throw proactive medical care on top of whatever virus or illness or whatever you're trying to fight off if you haven't laid that groundwork and that foundation. Um, I think that every single person should be on LLV. I think that if you take a time out and think about the things that you are um, uh, spending money on, I call it kind of your budget shift, right? So what are the things you are currently spending money on? Like for me, I had, you know, I would open up my medicine cabinet and we were doing a pretty good job kind of shifting over, you know, to a little bit more natural lifestyle. And so when I opened my medicine cabinet, I saw things like um, vitamin D and vitamin C and magnesium and a multivitamin and all of these things that are really great to be taking. But um, there was, it was just a smorgasbord, right? Like it was just like lots and lots of different little things. And when I took a time out and I paused and I said, okay, what is in this cabinet that is not going to be covered by LLV? And you guys know that I started kind of as a skeptic. And so I almost wanted LLV to be like not magic, but it turns out it is. Um, so when I was comparing all of the supplements and vitamins that I was taking, um, because I'm a grown up lady and I take my vitamins, um, I noticed that I was getting definitely a more complete um, vitamins and mineral structure. And I was um, now going to be able to take all of my vitamins and minerals in a bioavailable way. Um, for those of you that don't know what bioavailable is, that means that the vitamins and the minerals and, you know, basically everything that's in the doTERRA LLV, um, your body knows exactly what to do with it. So just like when you eat a carrot, you don't have to say like, no, I'm eating this carrot for eyesight. Nope, your body knows what to do with vitamin A, your body knows where to put it, your body knows where to put that fiber and all those other things that are in that carrot. Same thing with LLV, when you take that, um, your body goes super duper, your thyroid needs a little support and we're definitely gonna get your digestive tract back on. Um, it, it, your body knows what to do with it and it makes it super easy to digest. So even people who are like, oh, I try to take vitamins and they just hurt my stomach. Um, I, I don't know that I've heard anybody complain about that with LLV. There is a tummy tamer digestive blend inside of LLV already. Um, so that's great. And also your body isn't going, all right, well now we've got to digest this. 
I don't know if you guys saw, um, there was something maybe about six or nine months ago um, of somebody who takes a Centrum or a one a day kind of vitamin. I think this one specifically was Centrum. Um, they took a Centrum every single day and they also had x-rays done to see how the Centrum progressed through the digestive tract. And you can see the Centrum in its whole complete, we call them horse pills, right? Those horse pill form, you can see some here and you can see some in the intestines over here. You could see one down in the colon. Basically, they were all accumulating in the body. It wasn't digesting at all. Um, so even a Centrum, uh, you know, you're getting them on clearance at Walgreens or on sale at Walgreens, you're still spending, what, $15, $20 a month just on that. And to be spending $15 or $20 a month on something that is literally, literally wasted out of your body, nobody has time for that. So I think that's why um, a lot of people, when they do start LLV, they really notice that change in their body. Um, and it might be subtle and it might be nuanced, but people definitely notice uh, notice whenever they're done taking LLV or they decide, well, I'm, I'm going to run out, but I'll order in a week whenever I do my LRP or something. People notice then. It's those little things that we've just come to view as normal, like getting the cold that's going around. That's normal, right? Or my body hurts whenever I hop out of bed in the morning. That's just normal. That's just a sign of aging. Or like the funny, like, I can't remember anybody's schedule. If my keys weren't attached to my hip, I would never find them or any of those things. We've just come to view those as normal and they just don't have to be. Um, so I think that LLV, you really notice whenever you're taking it and whenever you're not taking it. And one of the times that I really noticed that we have invested in our health is when the big sickness is going around. Right now in Lincoln, there is a um, walking pneumonia that is starting as viral. Um, and because we'll have like several 60 degree days and then several 30 degree days and then several 60 degree days, um, it's turning into a more fungal pneumonia, which I did not even know was a thing until this week. And so um, people are just sick and sick and sick. And about the time you feel like you're getting better, you're getting another wave of something. And I'm over here like, I mean, we had a scratchy throat for a day or two, so that's when I really notice it. Because I try to take stock, like, how many germs are we as a family in contact with? I've got kids that go to church nursery, kids that go to Sunday school, kids that go to the YMCA, kids that go to literally five different schools in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's a lot of germs. A husband who works outside the home, a husband that travels several times a month in an airplane, which is basically a Petri dish that flies through the air. We just don't get that sick. And when we do, it's over really swiftly, okay? That's when I especially notice, and I'm grateful for the time that we have invested into this foundational nutritional base. Now, we can also talk about things that are not just LLV, even though I think that everybody should be a magical LLV, and it really is a pretty incredible product. Um, but just the foods that are putting that you're putting into your body. Um, so knowing what makes you feel good, knowing what makes you feel bad, knowing what foods are um, uh, cause inflammation, things like dairy and wheat and things like that, that most people have a hard time digesting. Um, especially if you're looking for a winter wellness routine, I would consider cutting back on any of those foods that just make you feel yucky. Um, and I'm not ever going to sit here and be like, you have to do keto or you have to do this, or you have to do your 21 day fix. And if you want to do that, that works for your family. Two thumbs up from me. Go ahead. Um, as a mom who is cooking for nine people every single day, nope, we're, no, nope. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm going to choose um, fruits and vegetables. I'm going to choose lean meats. I'm going to do those things that I know how to do. Um, but we're going to have dairy sometimes. We're going to have meat some, or wheat sometimes. I think I sent Courtney a text the other day. I was like, hey, the fun thing about um, meatloaf is that it contains red meat, dairy, and wheat. <laughs> because <laughs> I was not feeling good that night. And like, you know, those foods you're like, if I eat this, I'm going to feel awful. Just don't do it during the winter. Okay. Just skip it. Put it, just don't do it. Okay. If it's going to make you feel awful, if it's going to deplete your immune system, if it's going to make your body feel run down, just skip it. 
Okay. All right. Number two. Um, we're going to talk about, oh, exercise. Um, during the winter, it's a lot harder to get in movement, especially if your normal movement is outside stuff, right? Because it's cold, you guys. Um, you walk out the door and your face is freezing, your nose is cold, at least, you know, here in the good old Midwest USA. Um, it's cold outside and it makes it a little bit harder to move your body. Um, I've been choosing things like when I go to the store, parking in the back of the parking lot just to get a few extra steps in. Um, one of the tricks that I do is I actually pull my cart behind me at a store so I can just like swing my hips a little bit wider and move my arms a little bit stronger um, just to get a little bit of extra movement in. So you might have to do something like pick up um, a yoga video on YouTube, find a girl that you like or find the guy that you like or um, ask for a recommendation, some sort of, and like I'm not talking about like 45 minutes a night you should be doing something just choose to move your body a little bit so that you can keep things nice and healthy and strong um, and you'll notice that that's like number two on the list so it's not like well if I have time nope we need some intentional body movement every single day okay um, next thing rest and manage stress tonight I went to concert number one of three for this week. Um, there's stuff every night, right? This season, somebody has a Christmas party, somebody has this, somebody has that, you're supposed to bake for that. Um, whatever it is, all of our plates are full this season. And for me, I know that that means that I'm not getting the rest that I'm supposed to have. Um, so I would like to challenge you guys to getting in those six to eight hours every single night, whatever makes your body feel really awesome. And you guys know what that sweet spot is. For me, it's about seven hours. If I get a good solid seven hours, I'm good. Um, I would like to credit LLV with that because before I would sleep for 10 and still not feel rested. Um, but with LLV, I have found that I fall asleep faster and I stay in a nice solid sleep pattern for longer. And so I really do feel rested after seven hours. Um, so find your sweet spot and just commit to doing it. And do as I say, not as I do, because I am the worst at this, this time of year. I think, well, if I don't fold the laundry, nobody's going to fold the laundry. And I guess I'll just clean the house. And the next thing you know, I'm rage cleaning and the house is clean, but I also sleep for five hours, right? Does anybody else rage clean? Is that just me? Good, good. Somebody else rage cleans. <laughs> good. Thank you, Chrissy, for your honesty. Um, so just, I mean, you guys know there's always going to be more dishes. There's always going to be more laundry. There's always going to be something that's pulling your attention away from what is needed. And one of the main things that you're going to fight off illness is by having a body that is rested and nourished. Um, and especially if you're feeling under the weather, take the time to nap in the afternoon or put your feet up or, and just put things on the back burner for a little bit. Okay. Um, next thing, reducing toxic load. Um, when you are choosing gifts for people, you're going to skip baths and body works. You're not going to get that nonsense tonight or this season. You're because of the chemical smells, skip the candles, skip the bath and body works, um, skip those highly fragranced perfumes and lotions. They're not good for you. They're not good for the people you buy them for. Um, my friend Jill did the math on the spa kit, the one that has like all of the doTERRA spa items in it. And she said it's an average of $8.85 per item. You have 13 gifts in that spa kit that you can give to people that you love, um, that they're not going to be having any more of a toxic load. Um, you know, whenever I hear the word toxic, I don't just think of chemicals. Um, so maybe there's some toxic people that you might need to go, we're going to take a break. Um, I realize that family obligations can feel heavy. Um, and it might feel like you don't actually have a choice, but I am here to say you're a grown up lady and you do not have to go. Okay. If it is causing you stress and it is making your body sick, skip it. Don't go. Um, I do sort of hate that doTERRA has taken away my, I had a headache excuse. 
<laughs> that I have to think of something a little bit smarter than, sorry, I was sick. Cause I'm not anymore. I can't lie. And you can't just say like, I don't really like you. So I didn't want to go. So come up with something that works for you. <laughs> okay. Now proactive medical care. This is where I'm going to share some recipes and I'm going to share some oily goodness. Um, because sometimes with all the precautions in the world and all the rest in the world and all the reduction of stress in the world and all the LLV in the world, um, sometimes we just get sick and that's okay. I will say that I have noticed um, when or if we do get sick, I almost um, liken it to like a shadow of the illness that's going around. So there's this like big bad pneumonia going around and have we coughed a few times? Yeah. But I don't really feel like it was like the big thing, right? So like, um, I think it was two and a half years ago, we got influenza A at our house. And that's like the big one, right? Like that's a really big deal. You're on the couch for 14 days and it, like kids are missing nearly a month of school with influenza. We had it for like two days that we felt pretty terrible. So we got it, but we didn't have it for two weeks. Okay, so here are some things that we do, and I am gonna share my screen here. Um, at least I think that I am, hang tight. There it is. Okay, so here are some things, and I actually have this saved to share with you guys too, um, but the number one thing that I love whenever people are feeling under the weather is the bomb or the flu bomb. Um, in a 10 milliliter roller bottle, you combine the frankincense, lemon, oregano, on guard, and tea tree. We used to call this flume, but now that everything's tea tree, putting on your magic flute roller kind of sounds amazing too. <laughs> If you're familiar at all with opera or not. Well, anyway, it's not, it's your magic flute. Um, so use this and don't be afraid because of how quickly oils metabolize. Don't be afraid to apply this every 30 minutes or so when you guys are sick. Um, this isn't just like, well, I put it on once and I'm still sick. Nope, you're gonna put this on like every 30 minutes whenever you're sick. You're gonna roll it up your spine the best you can. You're gonna put it on bottoms of feet the best you can. Um, I basically just cover anybody head to toe wherever their skin showing. We're gonna put a little bit of the bomb on. Um, number two, obviously doTERRA makes a hand sanitizing mist and it's incredible. Um, but if you run out or whatever, here's a really simple recipe. Grab a two ounce spray bottle. 15 drops of On Guard, a tablespoon of witch hazel, which will help, help it emulsify in the water, um, and then a little bit of carrier oil. Now you can get fancy and you can put drops of vitamin E in there and do all sorts of things, but I like to keep it simple with things that I always have around the house. Um, the next one is steamy mug. If you have never done a steamy mug for sinuses, just prepare yourself because even the worst or like the most skeptical person in the world will be able to grab that steamy mug and go, okay, that actually worked. So if you are feeling super congested, or even if you know that when you do get congested, you have a tendency towards sinus infections or ear infections or things to tend to uh, take root and they tend to turn into something really yucky because you guys, it is a lot easier to fight off a cold virus than it is to fight off some sort of bacterial infection in your body. So I do the steamy mug, even if I'm not so congested, I can't breathe, but that I'm so congested that I want to get these antibacterial molecules coursing through my entire respiratory system. So you're going to grab a steaming mug of water, um, you know, like you would pour a cup of tea, then put two drops of peppermint, oregano, lemon, and tea tree. A lot of the same oils that were in that magic flute roller, right? I do know how to spell flute. I just want to make sure you guys all know that. I know that the magic flute is spelled F-L-U-T-E. Just wanted to make sure y'all knew that. <laughs> so steamy mug, you're seeing a lot of the same oils because they are really powerful antioxidants. They are really powerful antibacterial and antimicrobial and antifungal agents. So steamy mug, have tissues at the ready because anything that was in is coming out and you're going to start coughing and you're going to start, um, you know, having a lot of nasal discharge. So have your tissues ready to get all that junk out of there and you're going to feel like a million bucks. 
Oh, and along these same lines, a question that I tend to get often this time of year is do you use essential oils in like a neti pot? Um, a few years ago, I heard that you can use uh, eucalyptus and rosemary in the neti pot and that they don't burn. But you guys, I am the biggest baby in the history of internal oils ever. And I was like, nope, no way. So I made my neti pot water with, you know, the little powder thing in it. Um, and I put a drop of rosemary in it and I put a drop of eucalyptus and I shook it up and I dabbed my finger in there and I was like, <sighs> and I like dabbed it to the inside of my nose and I was totally waiting for it to burn. And it just didn't. It felt very fresh and it felt cool, but it did not burn at all. So then I felt comfortable shooting that on through my sinuses and it didn't burn and it did um, get rid of the infection that was starting. Okay, and then the last recipe is called Open Up um, and a 10 milliliter roller bottle combined lemon, lavender, and peppermint. What are we usually using that for? for allergies, right? Um, but what I have found is that it works really brilliantly as a decongestant, okay? So when you just feel like you have an excess of phlegm and an excess of snot, um, you're going to um, be able to kind of dry that up just a little bit because then there's not stuff that can actually get infected, right? Okay, so don't be afraid to use your allergy roller as a decongestant. Now there's loads of other recipes we can try. I have seen rollers for that deep cough blend. Um, I've seen, I mean, obviously we're using Symphony of the Cells around here when somebody's fighting something off. Um, different chest congestion rollers and concoctions are definitely going on around here, but don't be afraid to just grab your regular stuff too. Like breathe is really great this time of year. Um, any time of year, I really love to breathe. <laughs> um, and also when you, um, there might be some ways to think outside of the box. So did you guys know that forgive is really great for coughs and chest congestion? And when you grab your bottle of forgive, look at the side of it and read those ingredients. And since you guys are really smart, you're going to see, oh, I see why this is really great for coughs. I see this is really great, how, why this is really great for chest congestion. And so when we get some sort of like chesty something, I hand my kids breathe and forgive. And that's what they put on their bodies to help with that cough and to help take it away. Um, let me think what else. Oh, I want to talk about one more thing that we do here. Um, if anybody gra uh, gets anything, we do something called the sick tray. And so imagine a super high tech tray, also known as my cookie sheet. And I take my cookie sheet and I make somebody a sick tray. So first of all, it allows me that um, that face to face with my kid. And it allows me to say, I am going to take care of you. Because it would be really easy to be like, you're 16, go grab the oils, stop being dumb. Except, what do we want when we get sick? We want our mama. And so I take a time out and I make them a sick tray. So here's what sick tray has on it. It has elderberry syrup in it. Um, we use elderberry syrup around here a lot. Um, it's clinically proven to reduce um, uh, influenza. Um, and so we use elderberry syrup, but we do not make it with the ginger root and the, or all the, you know, the things that you're, the cinnamon sticks and all of that, the cloves. I, after it cools a little bit, I put on guard in it. All the things that you're supposed to boil with the elderberries to give it that spiced goodness, um, they're all in on guard. So I just grab a few drops of on guard um, and it makes a really simple elderberry syrup. If you've never made elderberry syrup, it is truly as simple as boiling elderberries, straining them out, adding a little bit of honey, and adding a little bit of um, on guard. Now you have elderberry syrup. So we keep that in our fridge. Um, and this is the every 30 minute sick tray. So I want them taking a teaspoon of elderberry every 30 minutes. I want them rolling on their oils every 30 minutes. Um, so that's another thing that we do is I put that magic flute roller on their tray and they know that they're going to be putting that on every 30 minutes. Um, I also put um, whole food snacks that are going to encourage their bodies to um, fight the disease as opposed to feed the disease. So you're not going to see a lot of sugar. Um, you're not going to see, you're going to see a lot of like whole food vegetables um, and some fruits, especially fruits that are high in vitamin C and calcium. Um, you're also going to see other things on there like 
On Guard Plus Soft Gels, the Turmeric Capsules, um, Deep Blue Polyphenol Capsules. You guys, I threw my back out a few weeks ago and I thought for sure it was going to be like, well, it was a good run. It was a good seven years, but I'm going to have to go to the doctor and get a pain medication. It was so bad. Um, and I was like, well, what have I got? So I took a Copaiba, a deep blue polyphenol complex, and a turmeric capsule, and it was gone in 15 minutes. I was moving my back again. It was fine. Um, so don't be afraid to pull out those things for fevers. Um, I definitely am firmly in the camp of if you have a fever, you are partnering with your body to do its job. I let fevers go. I let fevers go high. Um, and sometimes fevers are scary. I get that. I have a kid that spikes up to 105. Now the first three times that little Mr. 105 spiked, we were in the ER until it was even our mainstream pediatrician said, I think he just gets a really high fever. Um, so after all the spinal jabs and all of that, it was just, Joe gets a high fever. Um, so we let fevers go. We don't use peppermint to cool. We don't do anything. We want fevers to get up to where they need to get up to fight off infection. But that doesn't mean that you don't want your headache to go away. So use your typical pain rollers, your typical Copaiba, deep blue polyphenol, turmeric to help reduce that pain and that inflammation in the body. Um, anything else that's on our sick tray? Oh, a big old glass of filtered water with lemon oil in it, of course. Um, yeah, it's so scary when you have a high temp kid. Latarian, you're absolutely right. Um, most of my other kids were like 100, 101, and that's like a respectable fever. But that 105 nonsense is for the birds. Um, yeah, so big glass of filtered water with lemon oil. You guys know that lemon works as a gentle detoxifier, um, and it's just going to move whatever needs to be moved out of the body out faster. That's all I've got. That was fabulous, Amanda. Thank you so much. I, you didn't get to see me, but I put it, I put it in my ear and drove down the road. So <laughs> got to the next gas station. Um, thank you so much for doing that. And we're going to turn the recording off, please, Kenzie.